Now we are going to make a general definition of the three dimensional strain. Consider xyz coordinate axis 0 is the origin xy here we can think like a horizontal plane z is the vertical line p is a point which by some deformation has gone to p dash op is a vector r and op dash is another vector r dash. So from this triangle I can say r plus u, u is another vector showing the displacement of point p to p dash r plus u is equal to r dash. So from here we can write u vector is equal to r dash minus r. These are all in bold because these are the vectors. Now the strain displacement relation can be represented in this way which can be expanded to give 6 expressions. Epsilon ij is equal to 0 0.5 del ui del xj and then plus del uj del xi. Here we have to understand that u v w are the components of u. This is bold u and this is unbold u, this is small u, u v and w are the components of the u movement along x y z direction. Suppose this u component of movement is resolved along x axis, y axis and z axis, we will get certain values and those values are represented by u, v and w. Now we will try to understand it. Here we can think i and j as 1, 2, 3 or we can think as x, y, z in different books. They might be using 1, 2, 3 or x, y, z. Now let us expand it and I put i is equal to x and j is equal to x. That means epsilon xx, epsilon xx. Now what happens here? Del ui, this i becomes x. ux means the component of movement of u along the x which is the small u. So this becomes basically del u over there and then this is del xj, we are putting j also is equal to x. So del x, x along the x direction. So we can write it as along x will be del x. Similarly, if I do it here, same expression comes out and there is a 0.5. So that will cancel which means that epsilon xx is equal to del u del x. The u component of movement of the capital U and there is a del x in the denominator along the x direction. Similarly, I would request you from here take time and find out the expression for epsilon yy and epsilon zz. Now it will be important to know what is epsilon xx, epsilon yy, epsilon ij etc. We have already discussed the stress as second rank tensor. How we did it? We considered axis 1, axis 2 and axis 3. Then we defined the symbol sigma ij and the stresses that are applied. Here we are using the symbol epsilon ij the same meaning. That means if there is a strain perpendicular to this plane in this direction, I have to call it epsilon 1 1. So this can be called as a normal strain. Similarly, a strain along direction 2 and perpendicular to this surface will be called epsilon 2 2 and a strain along this direction will be called epsilon 3 3. Any strain that acts on the surface will be called as the shear strain. Here sigma epsilon 1 1, epsilon 2 2 and epsilon 3 3 are the normal strain. We can say epsilon i i means normal strain and for epsilon i j when i not equal to j it will be called as a shear strain. It is a shear strain if i is not equal to j. 
such as epsilon 1 2 epsilon 2 3 etc how they are defined in the same way we were doing sigma ij same way we can define and i can put some arrows within the diagram to show these shears like this can be one shear this is one shear this is another shear on this plane 3 there can be a shear here there can be a shear there so they are named epsilon ij when i not equal to j such as epsilon 2 3 or epsilon 2 1 now let us look at how the shear strain is explained. Consider that the cube is not under any torque that means sigma ij is equal to sigma ji and in that case it can be shown that the epsilon ij is also equal to epsilon ji that means epsilon 1 2 is equal to epsilon 2 1 epsilon 1 3 is equal to epsilon 3 1 etc. So epsilon yz in that case is equal to epsilon zy and with this epsilon zy I am going to initiate how this expression is being made. Epsilon zy is equal to this. So, here you note it is epsilon ij that means I am taking i as e equal to z and this j is equal to y. Now, let us look at it 0.5 del ui i will become z that means del u z what does that mean the component of u along z which is the omega or w i have said already u v w what the components of x y z so therefore del u z will be replaced by del w divided by del x j here x j j is equal to y because i am talking about the epsilon z y so, it becomes del x and subscript is y that means along the y direction. So, therefore, it will become del y it is here given as del y. Now, let us look at del u j here I said j is equal to y. So, the del of u component along the y direction what is that that is v. So, del v is stated there divided by del x i where i is the z here which will be del x z that means or the z direction so we call it as the del z. So, we know that find that epsilon z y is equal to 0.5 del w del y plus del v del z and then here is 0.5 to multiply and in a specific case I have said that the epsilon z y is equal to the epsilon y z. Similarly, and students must take time to understand that epsilon zx is equal to epsilon xz is equal to this expression and epsilon xy is equal to epsilon yx will be equal to this expression. Here these three are the normal strain and these three are the shear strain that has been deduced. So, what we were talking this is the general definition of the three dimensional strain and this is how we proceed. We have also the strain parameters earlier I have talked about the elongation, extension, then the stretch quadratic elongation, reciprocal quadratic elongation, natural strain or finite or the logarithmic strain those were done that that is at one side and in three dimension this is the way of uh, expressing the strain. Now, let us look at the strain definition in two dimension consider the two axis and this is a small body in two dimension which has been deformed to this white parallelogram. Imagine this distance is delta u y small distance and this distance is delta u x that is also a small distance. This distance is x unit and this distance is y unit. Then we can define the epsilon x y which is equal to epsilon y x when the body does not rotate no torque and when the sigma ij equal to sigma j i in that case will be defined as 0 0.5 and as been as has been shown right now delta u x divided by y plus delta u y divided by x and the tensorial strain will be represented as in a matrix epsilon x x epsilon x y epsilon x y epsilon y y here the epsilon x y equal to epsilon y x basically this has been defined and already I have defined the epsilon x x etcetera. 
Now another term is also used that is called the engineering shear strain which is represented by gamma xy and in the conditions that I describe will be equal to the gamma yx and here we just avoid this 0.5 rest of the things are stated as it is. So in other words the engineering shear strain gamma xy is twice that of the tensorial strain. What has been defined for xy the same definition works for the yx and also for the xz. And just to recollect here where is the z axis? This is the z axis the third dimension. So we are dealing this situation we can call this as on the xy plane or as I told you earlier we can also call it as the z plane. So we will now be using sometimes the gamma xy in our future works and also sometimes you will be seeing the epsilon xy in the future deductions and writings. We will now see the Jacobian matrix in different cases of deformation and movement of the body. For example, in the xy coordinate system suppose there is a point k which has the coordinate capital X comma capital Y. And after deformation this point k has come to k dash and its new coordinate is small x comma small y. So we have the coordinates of the point before deformation and the coordinate of the point after deformation and we have the two axes given. And suppose the relation between small x and the capital X is x is equal to x plus 5 and the relation between the small y and the capital Y is y is equal to capital Y plus 2. So in this case we can apply this matrix this formula del x1 divide del x1 then del capital X1. So here I do del del capital X is being applied here x capital X1 is the axis is the direction along 1 and here it is capital X is the direction. So once that is being done this small x1 will be here in this case x capital X plus 5. So this capital X plus 5 and this turns out to be 1. Now the next information that I need is del small x1 del capital X2. Capital X2 indicates a direction in this case this is the y axis. So instead of del capital X2 I will be using del y over here and I will put again x plus u that means x plus 5. Once this is applied I get 0. Now I will I am going to do del X2 del capital X1. Del X2 in this case means del y which means del y plus 2 that is what is stated and here x1 means the axis x in this one case so it is del x which turns out to be 0. Now similarly del del y y plus 2 turns out to be 1. So therefore we have calculated these four elements. We have not calculated these elements why because we are dealing here a two dimensional case so these situations do not arise. So in this case we are going to see the matrix only with four elements with two rows and two columns. I am going to write down 1 0 0 1 1 0 and 0 1 here and that is the I2 or the identity matrix with two rows and two columns. And this I2 indicates basically that 1 1 has come in the diagonal it is a rigid body movement no deformation has happened and therefore no strain has been created. Now with this we are moving into the rigid body rotation case imagine this is a rectangle and which is defined in terms of the x and the y axis. As usual capital X capital Y is the old coordinate I can write here again capital X and capital Y for some point which has undergone rotation is the old coordinate and small x small y is the new coordinate. So if there is a theta amount of rotation we can write down small x is equal to capital X cos theta minus capital Y sin theta and small y is equal to capital X sin theta y 
cos theta. So now here if we apply this uh, Jacobian matrix this operation 1, 2, 3 and 4 in the way I described we will find out finally cos theta minus sin theta and sin theta and cos theta. And interestingly if we do a determinant of this F matrix we will find 1 that is an observation. So there is a rigid body rotation and this is how the Jacobian matrix has been represented. We will see more such examples. To continue let us look at stretching. Imagine by this pulling we have pulled this rectangle up and this side also we have pulled it so that this rectangle finally becomes that rectangle that is origin 0 0. Now any point on this say here there there or there let us say has a coordinate x comma y and after deformation that point has gone say if you are considering this point has gone up if you are considering this point has gone in that direction is new coordinate is small x small y. So we can find out a relationship small x is equal to say 2 capital X plus 0 y and y is equal to 0 x that means no x term 1.5 y. So in this case this formula for finding out or if we find out this Jacobian matrix f is equal to 2 0 0 1.5 and we see clearly this is not the identity matrix. We can also note that x y new coordinate is equal to f as the matrix this one and then capital X capital Y as the old coordinate. Since it is not equal to I2 therefore it is a deformation certainly has happened it is not just a rigid body translation. Now we look into the shear the kind of shear we are going to talk is basically the simple shear in structural geology. Consider OX, OY perpendicular axis and this blue is uh, lines represent a rectangle and now you shear this side so that this blue rectangle now becomes a green colored parallelogram which is shown like this. Okay. So point M has moved to point N, theta is the angular movement of the line OM has become line ON right now. So now um, we can write within the triangle ONM basically this is theta, NM divided by OM is equal to tan theta and we can see what has happened to all the points, points have all moved upward but points have not, the X ordinate has not moved in this direction. So we can write that small x the new ordinate of x is equal to 1 into x plus 0 into y that means change in y has not affected the x value and small y in this direction all the ordinates is equal to 0.5 x let us say some number plus 1 into y. So here there is influence of both x and y. So in this triangle the way I have done we can say in this case basically 0 0.5 is equal to x tan theta. If we apply or find out the Jacobian matrix about this transformation it will be 1 0 0 1 no 1 0 and 0 0.5 1 as has been shown. So I understand the derivation was difficult lengthy but when we are working with it the Jacobian matrix is not at all difficult to handle. We have seen the Jacobian matrix now we want to see it in a different way consider we are moving from Cartesian to a polar coordinate system. So the J which is like this in the Cartesian system how will it look like? Let us take a point x y and which is represented by the point k. This x y can be represented if I join from the origin by a straight line this distance if it is taken as small r then this distance is r cos theta and that is the r sin theta where theta is the angle between them. r comma theta becomes the polar coordinate. So in other words we can con we can move from x to r cos theta and y to r sin theta. Square root of x square plus y square is equal to r of course which is seen from the diagram. Now here the j matrix will alter in this way del x del r del x del theta del y del r and del y del theta. So if we use this and this we get cos theta minus r, r sin theta sin theta and r cos theta. Now an, an exercise for the students x defined by the u and v coordinate is 3 u minus v y defined by the u and v uh, parameters is 7 u v find out the j matrix. So 
I would request students not to move ahead with the video. Solve it, take your time, solve and then you will look for the solution. I really hope you waited for a while and uh, you can look at this. This is the solution of the problem.